What's up guys, Race Nation TV here, back again with another video, and today was qualifying for the Road America weekend, and what an interesting qualifying session uh, we had. Uh, lots of things that were different from yesterday, and I think we have a totally different uh, discussion now versus yesterday. Uh, now let's just get right into the day, uh, let's start with practice number two, which happened this morning. Uh, the one thing that I noticed that was uh, uh, quite a bit of a change was uh, yesterday they were running in the 1 minute 47 bracket, and today, this morning, pretty much the entire top 10 uh, was running in the 45s, almost two seconds faster. Uh, now, even on the black tires early in the session, uh, those guys were running into the 46s, uh, a second under yesterday's times. Uh, so the difference between yesterday and today uh, was crazy. I think it was uh, this morning, obviously, I think it was a do uh, to the different uh, conditions, the, the hotter track yesterday. Um, but that's definitely something that's important going into tomorrow, and it's something that carried over into qualifying. So in round one with uh, group number one, we had some uh, big names, Colton Herta, Alex Pillow, uh, Hunter Ray, Dixon, uh, we had McLaughlin, and then we had our uh, kind of our fun guys, Kevin Magnuson and Jimmy Johnson out there. Uh, Magnuson making his first ever IndyCar start this weekend. Uh, and it was an interesting session, you know. Just like, just like I said earlier, uh, we were getting into the 45s uh, early on, and there were only two guys in that session, Colton Herta and Pillow, uh, they were, that were able to get into that 45 bracket. Uh, so those guys, you knew early on in the qualifying that they were going to be strong. Uh, some guys got caught out. It's Kevin Magnuson, uh, not a huge shock uh, that he didn't make it. He didn't advance to round two. James Hinchcliffe, his season continues to struggle. Scott McLaughlin, Connor Daly, and then probably the biggest surprise was Scott Dixon, who qualified seventh in his group. Uh, that was unexpected. But the guys who did advance in uh, group one of the qualifying was Colton Herta, Alex Pelo, Sebastian Bourdais had a really good... That was surprising to see Bourdais go up to third in his group. Uh, Pagano in fourth, Grosjean, and then Ryan hunter rounding out the top six. Uh, now, there were only two of these guys in the 45 uh, lap time bracket. Uh, that was Colton Herta and Alex Pelot. So those guys, you know, you could tell right away they're going to be quick. So now group number two, uh, Rossi, Newgarden, Power, Award, Ray Hall, Askew. This was a stacked group. Uh, and with a stacked group like that, you knew a lot of big guys that you thought were going to be in contention uh, for pole. Uh, they got bumped out. And uh, let's just go over some notable names uh, that didn't make it and some interesting things to talk about. So Cody Ware was 13th out of 13th last in his group. That's not surprising. Um, but he his lap time, he did a minute 47.7. Uh, he ran a couple hundredths. Uh, faster than Jimmy Johnson actually and yeah, that's obviously that's two seconds off off the pace uh, But jumping into an IndyCar for your first weekend uh, being able to go out there and run 147s after having uh, being like your third session on track for the weekend uh, Not bad not bad. I, I you know I Really don't have anything bad to say about Cody Ware today. I mean he did an excellent job. Just uh, yeah uh, We move on uh, Takuma Sato qualified 10th in his group uh, Graham Rahal 7th and uh, those two uh, the Rahal team I said I said yesterday that you know they've been qualifying horribly but in the race they are criminally underrated and uh, I think Graham Rahal is definitely one of those guys that you know he ran like fourth uh, this morning with a cooler track and I think just you know something going from the cooler track to the hotter track didn't translate uh, to you know that being able to, to make it through into round number two. Uh, now, I skipped over his name because this is probably my favorite uh, topic of the day is Oliver Askew uh, filling in for the injured Renus VK in the 21 car. Uh, he qualified eighth in his group, didn't advance obviously, uh, but in practice today he was eighth. So that makes it two practice sessions in a row where he was inside the top 10, and then he just barely. I think if Askew had another lap, uh, he could have possibly advanced. I mean, Eighth is nothing uh, to be ashamed of, I think, uh, just jumping into this car for the first weekend uh, of the season for him. I mean, I I just, uh, I think he's going to be able to improve on that tomorrow, unless, uh, because you got to remember, when he was with Aaron McLaren SP last year, he had a, I mean, you could tell he was fast at Road America, it was just he had a gearbox issue that uh, he was stuck in the same gear 
but he still finished the race and still did some pretty, uh, I would say, notable things in that race uh, that definitely you know showed his true potential. Because Askew's one of those guys, and he's he's an Indy Lights champion for a reason, guys. I think, uh, you know, I I was pretty I was pretty upset when he didn't advance, but I, I mean I think he, there's uh, I think there's pace in that car, and he's going to be able to improve tomorrow. So he's one to watch for. But obviously in the Fast Six, you know, making it to the next round, New Garden, Rossi, Power, Award, Ed Jones, Jack Harvey, those guys. Uh, five out of those six, except everyone except for Jack Harvey, was in the 45s. Uh, and uh, it was just as the sessions went on, it got hotter and hotter. Let's move on to round two. Obviously, the way qualifying works, you take six out of the first 12, six out of the second 12, and then you, you have 12 all together. Uh, the guys who didn't make it pat into the Fast Six... Uh, Ed Jones in 12th, uh, Sebastian Bourdais in 11th, Pato Award in 10th, did not advance to the Fast 6. This is probably the craziest session of the day. Uh, Ryan Hunter Ray, or Alexander Rossi in 9th, Ryan Hunter Ray in 8th, and then Romain Grosjean in 7th. This session, Group 2 was insane uh, because with 30 seconds left, Romain Grosjean, who, remember, was 7th, was on pole. He was P1 with like 30 seconds left and it was just the last six cars that went across bettered their time and you know Grosjean just fell uh, the guys who did advance uh, Jack Harvey actually went P1 Colton Herta, Joseph Newgarden, Simon Pagano, Alex Pillow and Will Power that is three Penske cars inside the top the fast six uh, now I mentioned yesterday that they struggled they've been struggling this year uh, and they failed to get a win um, so this looks like this is going to be their best chance. Uh, Joseph Newgarden, Will Power, former winners of this race, and uh, I mean, I think they're going to be big contenders. Uh, Colton Herta looks really strong. Jack Harvey as well. Uh, just looked really strong in Group 2. Uh, I mean, Jack Harvey ran a, a good bit faster than Colton Herta in that, in that session, but I mean, as, we can, as I'll, I'll go over next, uh, the Fast Six, the Fast Six, there's also some things to talk about. Uh, so starting sixth, Simon Pagano, fifth, Alex Pillow, fourth, Will Power, third, Jack Harvey, second, Colton Herta, and your pole sitter is Joseph Newgard. Now, the interesting thing about the Fast Six uh, was that it, it, when it started, three of the six drivers went out on black tires, because uh, that's one thing to talk about uh, this weekend. Uh, that was brought up last night uh, that I saw on Twitter was that the tire degradation this weekend is absolutely abysmal. Uh, Graham Rahal was saying last night that it one, maybe two laps uh, until your tires are done. Uh, so obviously some guys starting in the first six uh, positions trying to you know go out on black tires, uh, qualifying them, not expecting to go out on pole, uh, but to start the race on black tires might be a huge advantage uh, with how quickly they might fall off. This is kind of like the same thing we saw at Detroit, uh, where guys were having to pit really early because the tire fall off was just absolutely uh, insane. Uh, so uh, Colton hurt a second. Uh, he was on Reds, Harvey, Power, Polo, Pagano. This started out with top three of the six, uh, like I said, but then some of the guys came in and pitted for red tires. Uh, but the one guy who stayed on blacks the entire session was Joseph Newgarden. That's right, Joseph Newgarden qualified on pole on black tires, uh, which is just absolutely insane. Uh, I was thinking the whole time during the Fast Six that, wow, it's going to be interesting, uh, Newgarden starting sixth but being on the black tires, but nope. He went out and uh, he put down a 46 flat and uh, on black tires just on the pole. Uh, so I think Newgarden is already going to start the race at a huge advantage. Uh, versus the guys starting on reds, but we'll have to see, you know, how that's going to go. The strategy of tomorrow is going to be uh, interesting. Oliver Askew is saying uh, pop uh, three stops probably tomorrow, uh, unless you get a lot of yellow, then you could probably make it on two. So uh, it sounds like everyone's going to be on the same strategy, but the strategy I think to keep in mind while watching the race tomorrow is going to be the tires. Uh, so I don't know, man. Alex Pillow. Uh, P5 in Pato Award not making it to group, uh, to group, oh, to the Fast Six, uh, my bad. Uh, but so far, I said yesterday my money was on Pato, uh, and I was wrong about Pato winning the pole, but I mean, Pelo besting Pato uh, so far this weekend. That was the first hurdle uh, for Alex Pelo in uh, defending or trying to get back that points lead. 
Uh, so interesting names in the Fast Six. A uh, lot. I think anyone within this. Uh, the Fast Six could win this race, but then you also got to keep in mind Grosjean in seventh. Uh, he's looked strong all weekend. Uh, I think, and you go even further back, Graham Rahal, Oliver Askew, they've looked really strong. Ryan Hunter Ray has looked really strong, I think. And uh, yeah, off weekend for Scott Dixon, again, weird. Uh, but I mean, yeah, this, it's just such a crazy weekend because I think pretty much, I, I have so many names in my, in my head uh, that could be contenders tomorrow and just... Uh, one thing after another happens, and uh, we could just, this race could just you know flip upside down, and we could have something, something we I haven't even talked about in this video. So let me know what you think down in the comments. Who's gonna win? It's so hard to predict. Uh, there's no way. Uh, but I mean, if you can predict it, then ah, uh, uh, man, this is just such a crazy weekend. But yeah, let me know down in the comments uh, what, who you think's gonna win this weekend. Uh, my money, I. <sighs> I'm going to swing for Colton Herta. Even though he's starting on reds, I think New Garden's already got an advantage. Like I said, I think it's going to be Colton Herta uh, getting the win tomorrow. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. It could be anybody in the field, and that's what makes IndyCar so fun. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. Make sure you watch the race tomorrow. I believe it's at noon central time. Uh, so get your time zones right. In Wisconsin, we're in, uh, this is in central time. So keep that in mind and uh, enjoy the race. And I will, I'll be seeing you tomorrow after the race.